Hi everyone, in this video we're going to take a look at shell dynamics. So what shell dynamics does is it allows you to turn any mesh object in Maya into a mesh network uh, which you can then use mesh dynamics on. So in this example we're using text um, but it could be anything. Um, so I will show you how to set this up before I just open a new scene. If I hit type here, hit F on the keyboard to fit that to the view, go to the mesh menu, dynamics and add shell dynamics. Then if I uh, zoom out and push play we have dynamics so there you go we're done um <laughs> for busy people you can now tune out uh for anyone who wants to carry on watching the tutorial i will then set up the scene that i just demoed so um and then i'll, I'll show another example of uh, this working on any any old object so let's create a piece of shell dynamics um so, uh, well piece of type first and then i'll change the font i'll type in Help us if I can spell. Um, I'm going to sort out the kerning a little bit on this. So let's just do that. And whoops, declare that to be a lovely piece of type. And then, um, yeah, we'll just add dynamics to that. So just add shell dynamics. Uh, press play, and we're left with NAM standing. <laughs> Everything else falls over. Uh, let's add a few more frames. And then um, I will um, add a cube. Now add a cube, create mesh number from this cube. Um, change the distribution type to volume. And then I will add a transform node. Oops, it helps if I use the right mouse button. Uh, push create on the um, uh, input. And then I will Switch to the front view and keyframe this. So I keyframe this from here, say, and then a frame 100. I'll move this over here, like so. So what we have at the moment is that, which is not very exciting at all. Uh, so on the second mesh network, um, on the distribute node, where it says number of points, I am going to type equals frame uh, times 0.5, which means that the point count is going to be whatever the frame number is. Uh, times by 0.5, so halved. So if I just hit return then, um, and I push play now, you see what's going on there. And then I will, what will I do? I will add dynamics to this. So if I just add dynamics, we then have this. And that is also not very exciting. So um, I will go onto the type network and I will click initially sleeping. And then I will show the collision shapes so that you can see uh, gray collision shape uh, means uh, sleeping red means um active and then i will put some initial velocity onto the little cube network so let's um, have minus 100 in z and now when i push play we get this kapow <laughs> right so um that's that so let's say that for some reason i want to spread these letters out a little bit. Um, so editing editing the text, um, is, so this is less easy <laughs> than it really should be, uh, says the developer. Um, so, so let's say we wanna add a bit of tracking to this. Let's say we put tracking of 10. So we've changed the tracking on the text. Nothing is updated. And this is because MASH needs to be told that you have updated something on the type node. And so if we go to the dynamics node here, we, um, there's an initial state and in the initial state are the type positions. And you need to refresh this to let MASH know that we've changed some stuff. So if you just uh, tap this twice, uh, that will um, first update the mesh, then the collision shape based on the mesh. So now we can uh, push play and we have our updated um, positions and things. Uh, so the same thing goes if you update the type as well or the font, that kind of thing. Just come in here and then double tap the initial state first to get the new mesh, second to get the um, uh, collision shapes updated. Um, so the uh, the other thing is um, that if we were to grab the type and we were to kind of um, move it, rotate it, we don't need to do anything. If we're just uh, if we're just affecting the transform, then that change will go through um, automatically to match. So it will automatically trigger the the initial state calculation if you move the transform, like if you scale this or whatever that kind of thing. And um, we're automatically updating the collision shape. So it's only if you change a setting on the actual type node itself that you need to do that. So. This obviously works off the bat. Um, cool, so that done. Um, and the pitfall, you're now aware of the pitfall, uh, how to update the type. Um, I will start a new scene. 
and then show you how this works on any odd shape. So let's create a new polyprotonic and then I'm just going to right click, select the edges, go edit mesh, um, detach. Then I'm going to select the faces, go and open the new circularized tool. I'm going to abuse it to um, uh, to use its uh, normal offset and then I will extrude these out ever so slightly like so and then I'll do a poke and then um, nope which one do I want that one uh, do that so and then go mesh display harden edge have I still got the circular eyes? I do. I'm just going to turn the normal offset down ever so slightly, so we end up with this. Right, so here is our kind of weird shape. Um, so the important thing to note is that there are different polygon islands or polygon shells. Um, so if I right click, go face, and then double click um, uh, on one of the faces, then a polygon shell is selected, which is this. So, um, And now if I, with the shape selected, go to mash dynamics at shell dynamics. Uh, rewind and play. We get that, which is pretty fun. So that done, uh, over in the mash dynamics node, if we increase the friction, let's rewind and play, we've got this, and then we can send the objects back to their original positions, and then we can drop to the floor again, and then we can do the same thing again. <laughs> Just have a bit of fun. Anyway, so that's, um, you can use it on any mesh you want, the shell dynamics. So um, that's that. I uh, hope you found this useful, and I'll see you in the next vid.